I have a burden for people to know things and know it well. I have been injured by Satan because I was doing things that were I had passion for and emotional. When crisis came, that was when I discovered the excellency of precision. The devil is not moved that you are jumping when you are doing what you are doing. It's adrenaline. If somebody dies, if you don't know what to do to wake him up, if you like dance, when you finish dancing, they will bury him. It's when your brother, your mother, or your father is sick. That's when you will find out what exactly did the Bible say about healing. Because that one now, you are not preaching on a campus. You know, when you are preaching and there is a platform, you can stand up and say, the hand of God is for healing. When the hand of God moves, miracles happen. When your uncle or your auntie is sick, you won't say hand of God. You will come, you want to know what is the secret of the power. There's <laughs> no emotion now. Because money will be spent, there will be pains, and if nothing happens, the person will end up in the mortuary. That's why I'm not moved by many things anymore. I have seen the torment of Satan. I want to know how this thing works. And I will always put myself on the line. Let me be disgraced. It will cost me to go and search more. But by all means, we must know how this thing works. That's why I emphasize the way I do. Power gifts. These are gifts of the spirit that releases the dimensions of God's power. When these giftings are at work, the power of God is put on display. And so a man who has the power gift is like one who has the key to unlock God's power. So when God wants to demonstrate power, those giftings go to work. They release the dimension of God's power. There are three giftings in the category of power gifts. Number one is the gift of faith. Number two is the gift of the workings of miracles or working of miracles and number three is the gifts of faith you know in this particular gift the punctuations matter it's very important so you have gift of faith you have working of miracles and you have gifts of faith of healing so we are going to look at them one after the other what is the gift of faith? The gift of faith is a supernatural ability divinely imparted instantaneously to a believer to enable him receive a miracle. It's a supernatural ability divinely imparted instantaneously to a believer to enable him receive a miracle. So when the gift of faith is at work, People are supernaturally able to receive miracles from God. It is different from growing your faith. Growing your faith takes time. Takes time of prayer, of meditation, of practice. But the gift of faith is instantaneous. It didn't come because you are meditating on Isaiah 53. It just comes upon you and you know this person will be healed. So you can receive that miracle instantaneously. When that gift lifts, the same thing you, you receive boldly now, you become afraid of it. Because you have not developed your faith. A gift just worked out. So when the gift of faith is at work, ah, oh, it's sweet. Sometimes, I just came back from Botswana. I saw one woman with crutches. I just knew she would walk. And when, when, you, when, when that knowing comes and that faith is imparted, you, you become like a master. I said, come on, come. I was acting like uh, crutches and nothing. I said, no, come on, don't worry, come. You are good, you are good. You can even use some accent at that point. Hello, my sister. You can walk to the front. Come on here. Come on, come on. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Jesus loves you. <laughs> if the gift of faith is not at work, if you see it, you will say they lay hands on the sick and they recover. By his stripes we are healed. You will pray. You will say, sweat. You, your, some things will be happening because you are exercising yourself. But when the gift of faith comes, instantaneous, you just know this thing must happen. You don't know how you know, but you know. And in that knowing, there is power. The moment you know it, you can, you can do it anyhow you want. You can say, stand up. 
You can pull the person up. You can even push the person. Smith Wigglesworth operated in the gift of faith dangerously. Somebody had cancer. The stomach was swollen like this. As we, the way Smith Wigglesworth ministers is that when it comes to the altar, they know him. So the moment is coming up, you will see people line up in front. You know what he says? Whoever gets here first is healed of whatsoever. So people will carry the dead and stand in front. The moment the guy climb up, as he say, whoever, they run there. And anybody who comes will be healed. It's the gift of faith. Because you can go and say, whoever, the first whoever that will come, will be on the wheelchair and the leg will be like... They <laughs> will say, wait, wait. Don't break spiritual signals. <laughs> when I say whoever, I meant the deaf. I didn't say whatever. <laughs> you would have allowed the sentence to finish. But the guy had it. Now, this lady had cancer. The stomach was like this. And when Spidwigus was called for them, they brought her. And he punched the cancer. The lady fell down and fainted. <laughs> you know, people didn't say anything because Tom, he has done it many times. Things happen. So, nothing happened. Lift her up. He carried his hand again. People say, Ego. The lady fell down. Like, what is happening? Is he a lady or a man now? I've forgotten a bit. Fell down. When they say lift up the third time, he carried his hand. One man said, You son of the devil. <laughs> Stop that. You want to kill her? He said, Shut up. Face your business. I know my own business. <laughs> That's gift of faith. And he hit again. When he hit the third time, cancer pulled out. Fresh stomach. Fresh belly, fresh. The cancer pulled out. And instantly healed. He went to another person on healing line. You know these kind of people they bring from ICU. There's oxygen masks everywhere. And he's carrying oxygen pipe. They are moving. He held the pipe, pulled it out. Hit the person on the chest and started going. They say, oh, he's dead. He's dead. He didn't turn back. He's dead. And the person slumped and fainted. After a while, the person now breathed and stood up and started shouting. They say he's alive, he's alive. He didn't turn. You will think he will say, Yeah, praise God. He didn't turn. When they told him the person is alive, he said he has to. I know. It's called the gift of faith. This is not drama. If you try it, they'll carry you on handcuff. But when that gift comes, anything you do works. I heard, I read, I watched Jaco. This one watched. Somebody has cancer on the face. They brought the person. And Jaco, he, he does it like joke. Say, come on, come on, come on. Bring him here. Do you believe the Lord will heal him? They said, yes. Come here, brother. Now let's pray to Jesus. He held it. Father, in the name of, oh, here it is. Cancer pulled out as if it's chingon. <laughs> he said, here's the cancer. Look at it. It's gone. Glory to God. He put cancer out of somebody's face as if it's chewing gun that is there. It's the gift of faith. When it is imparted, you just know that the miracle is already perfected and you can receive it with ease. So the second thing about the gift of faith is that it functions from the place of rest. If it is the gift of faith, there will be no anxiety. You may not have gone to theology. You may not remember any Bible verse. You may not have prayed, but you just know. And the moment that gift comes upon you, you can lift a mountain and nothing will happen. A mount, you can carry anything and anything becomes possible. That's why it's called power gift. There are four ways of expressing this gift. Number one is through proclamation. Proclamation. When the gift of faith is at work, it flows through the channel of proclamation. Number two, the gift of faith works through provisions. Provisions. Supernatural provisions. Number three, the gift of faith works through preservations. Or it engenders preservation. And number four, it is spiritual transport. I learned these things from some of the best teachers on this subject. Peter Tan, Lester Sumro. They dealt with this subject very deeply. And when they are explaining it, you wonder, is this, how didn't I know this? 
And this is what they taught. Proclamation, provision, preservation, and supernatural transport. Now, let me show you a few scriptures on proclamation. John 11, verse 40 and 42. Lazarus was dead. Lazarus was buried. Lazarus had decayed. Jesus showed up after four days. And they said, if you were here, our brother would not have died. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Say, he that believeth in me shall not die. Even if he were dead, he shall live again. And when they kept talking, he now wept for them because of their unbelief. Where did you keep him? And he showed up. They say, it's there. But by now, he should stink. He said, roll away the stone. The moment they rolled away the stone, the Bible said with a loud shout, Jesus shouted and said, Lazarus, come forth. And they said, he that was dead came back to life. There is assurance. You know that this thing must happen. When you find people who declare audaciously and things happen with high level precision, know it's the gift of faith at work. Recently, Pastor Chris went for healing school. They were doing the healing streams. The usual Pastor Chris operates healing and workings of miracles. So when he shows up, he lays hands on the person. Sometimes he moves his hand. He's imparting the anointing. Or he says, breathe in, breathe out. He's doing all of that. He was walking towards the people. And there were many. Suddenly he stepped back. Something came on him. And he moved back. And he said, listen to me all of you. You are all healed. Stand up and walk. As if he was angry with the sickness. And people started jumping up. No laying of hands, nothing. He just, no prayer. You are all healed. That's the gift of faith. It's not something you do every day. Something came on him. He just discovered that they are already healed. So there's no need for prayer. There's no need for laying on of hands. There's no need for anointing. And he just proclaimed, you are all healed. Bishop Oedeko told the story. When they wanted to build the 50,000 seat auditorium. That is supposed to be the largest building church auditorium in the world. You are not in the United States. You don't have the best engineers and architects. And he stood up in church. The thing came on him. One year, the building is built. And that was all. Two weeks to dedication, building had not finished. Two weeks, too much. The world was created in six days. We shall dedicate it. And the gift of faith went to work. Everything that needed to be done was done. Now, you don't declare it and you are panicking. There is rest. The proof that is the gift of faith is that there is supernatural rest. You are not afraid. Will he walk? Will he not walk? You just know. Like you can, you can bank on it. You just know that it must work. That's the gift of faith. And one of the channels or one of the things that it provokes is proclamation. It will put words in your mouth. Words that you didn't read. Words that you didn't hear anybody say. But you will say it in front of impossibility. And it will be answered. From the place of rest. Know that that's the gift of faith. Now, if it's not on you, don't go and act drama. I've told you my story. When I started listening to this man, I didn't know the dynamics. You will hear them say something. You too will go somewhere and say. It was later we started listening to the messages again. We now discovered some things were happening to them. So you can come to a place. They tell you, you come to a family. They tell you people are dying. You say, except I'm not called. Nobody dies here anymore. They say, no, somebody's already in ICU. It doesn't matter. And there is rest. And death goes back. It's the gift of faith. So you must be sensitive to know it. You come before a circumstance that is seemingly impossible. And suddenly a word is rising on your inside. It is done. It is done. You want to retold it, you can't. It comes out of you like a gusher. You know, that's the gift of faith. Many times, it happens to many, but they don't know it's the gift of faith. Somebody comes to you and says, I've been married for 20 years. I'm not yet. I don't have a child yet. You say, before this year is over. Meanwhile, you are in December 24. <laughs> before this year is over, you conceive. 31st can't end until that person takes him. I was in the hospital when my son was born. Some of my friends came. The wife gave birth eight years ago. Secondary infertility. Their daughter was eight years. 
And when we were walking out of the car, I just knew. I turned to him and said, by this time next year, you will carry your son. We were not praying. I just knew. That was the gift of faith. The guy said, amen. But he looked surprised. You know why? The wife was supposed to travel two weeks later to Italy for a course of one year. He said, I hope this man of God has not made, me, made mistake this time. <laughs> and the wife traveled. When she left, three weeks later, she had to come back to the country. She came back, spent one week and moved. One week, she conceived. And now, they've carried their son. He came back and said, my wife is pregnant. I said, what? how? He said, you said it in the hospital. I said, thank God, I didn't know. <laughs> Something moved on my inside. It's the gift of faith. Listen, when that thing begins to move, don't be afraid. As you speak, the moment you speak it, rest will come to you. Instead of fear, you will have rest. Know that it's, it's the gift of faith at work. Proclamation. Number two is by provision. First Kings 17 verse 4. Elijah was supernatural, supernaturally sustained by the gift of faith. You know in verse 1, he came to Ahab. As surely as the Lord God liveth, before whom I stand, there shall be no rain nor dew. Hmm. Rain has never stopped since the world began. Oh, hope you know what you are saying. It's the gift of faith. And when he walked out, the Spirit of God led him to a brook. He sat there by faith. And suddenly, a raven was bringing bread from wherever. If the whole nation is in drought, where are they baking bread? And the record holds that the raven is the stingiest bird. But the raven will bring bread in the morning and in the evening. And the guy was sustained. There was no panic. There was no record anywhere that Elijah was begging God. Please don't forget me, Lord, I'm here. He was confident. He was audacious. He was in the place of rest. That's the gift of faith. I heard the story of a preacher. God gave him a word. I think he did something and there was no food. There was no money. But by the gift of faith, he declared in his family. He said, there is no day we will not have what to eat. And all of a sudden, the next day, an eatery company suddenly began to bring food, leftover food, to dump in front of his house. And the food is well packaged. And the food will come. They will carry, eat and drink water and live in soccer for a long period of time until everything was reverted because faith was at work. How do you think Jesus fed 3,000 people? It was the gift of faith. There was provision. There was no panic. What do you have? They said, no, no, don't think about it. Even a year's wages can't sustain these people. What do you have? The moment they brought five loaves and two fish, this is more than enough. Take. Give them. Let them eat. Give who? From where? From who? And as they were giving, everybody had more than enough. He had assurance. How do you know that five loaves and two fish will go round? It's the gift of faith. It will supernaturally sustain you. The gift of faith also makes for preservation. Daniel 6.16 When Daniel was thrown into the lion's den, there was no, oh Lord, save me, oh Father. No. There was rest. They threw him into the den. He, he laid down and relaxed. You will not read that Daniel was praying, Father, please save, save your prophet. He knew the lion can't eat him. He just knew. So, one of the ways gift of faith work is supernatural preservation. You are going through a circumstance where everybody is panicking. You are resting. They say, are you foolish? What's wrong with you? There is danger. Not for you. You know you are preserved. If they ask you how, you don't know how. It's the gift of faith. Now, why am I explaining this? So that when it starts happening, you will now know that you have it. And if you know you have it, you will now know how to switch on your antenna for that gift to work. The reason many people don't walk in spiritual giftings is because they don't know they have it. Several times, all your colleagues are going through danger. Everybody is weeping and crying. They say they will, they will not pay salary again. You just know you don't have a problem. You don't know how. It's a gift working in your life. If you now know that this thing is a gift, then anytime there is a difficult situation, you start waiting on God. You start praying. You start hoping. You start becoming sensitive because you know the gift can come on at any time. And the moment the gift comes, you now know that is the gift. How do you think we minister? There are times when you come for a meeting and the first people that greet you are sick people. They put them in front so that you can't escape them. 
And as you are preaching, you are preaching, you are preaching, you get to a level where rest just comes. You just know they are healed. Ah. Then you now say, um, this message I'm preaching to show you the effectiveness. You now enter lecture. You so say there are two ways of preach of, of showing the efficacy of a message. Number one is through the exegetical correctness. That means you can trace it, it's theologically correct. The second way is by power. So now that I'm done teaching, let me demonstrate. <laughs> they will look at you and say, Kai, this man has stature. No, it's the gift of faith. You knew they will be healed. And now that you know anything you want to, you can say, how did Paul take, put this handkerchief on. <laughs> That's how the gift of faith works. But if you didn't know that any time this rest comes in the face of circumstance is the gift of faith, you will have that rest. You will still not know what to do. But if you have that rest and you know this is how the gift of faith works, then you become bold. So if I don't have money and I naturally should be anxious, but suddenly I find peace, I know that, oh, faith has switched on. I'll now say, um, money, come. And the money will come. It doesn't matter where I am. Because now I know the signal. The moment the signal comes, I know nothing can be impossible. Because that's how the gift of faith works. It makes you to become effective in kingdom engagement. There are many Christians that the only gift they have is the gift of faith. But they don't know the sign. So they are in the plane. They are driving. There is danger. They have peace. They don't know. And because they don't know, they don't know what to say. They now join people crying. They are in a city, there is famine. People are crying for food. They have peace. But they didn't know that that sign is gift of faith. They join everybody crying. What you should do that time is to prophesy. My own resources come from heaven. I cannot lack. I cannot want. I am abundant. Walking in abundance. And people are looking at you. Why? I know the gift of faith has switched on. And so anything I do will work. That's how the gift of faith works. Finally, transport. When a man is operating by faith, he can enter into the economy of bilocation and translocation. Genesis 5.24 We saw the life of Enoch. He said, Enoch walked with God and was not because God took him. It was in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 5. We now understood that it was faith at work. He said, by faith. So, Enoch's translation was by faith. So the fourth way the gift of faith works is by translocation. So if you are in a situation where the words don't come for you to declare, if you are in a situation where what you need does not come supernaturally, and if you are in a situation where you cannot be preserved supernaturally, then you will be carried away. That's how the gift of faith works. So the first three preserves you inside the crisis, but the fourth one takes you away from the crisis. So the way men will be caught up it's by the operation of the gift of faith. Even rapture, when rapture comes, all of us will receive that impartation and will be caught up. Many times, you see people functions like that. And Enoch's life is a graphic example. Hebrews 11.5, it says, by faith, Enoch was what? Translated. So the gift of faith engenders translation. You just know that you can die in this circumstance. You just know that this poverty can kill you. You just know that this accident, you won't die here. The faith is too strong. So if the car does not stop, you will leave the car. That's how the faith works. So it's either you are preserved in the circumstance through a proclamation, through provision, or through supernatural preservation, or you are caught up. And so the car is damaged, but you are walking out. And they say, what happened? I shifted. <laughs> By faith, Enoch was what? translator. This is how Elijah, why do you think Elijah talks to everybody and nobody could do anything to him? The gift of faith was provoking translations in his life. In 1 Kings 18 verse 10 to 12, when Obadiah came to him, he said, go and tell the king I will come. He said, I'm not going anywhere. Please, listen, I have fed 7,000 prophets. Don't allow me to die like this. Please, follow me. He said, no, I'm coming. He said, no, I know. That if I turn, the Spirit of God will carry you. So they knew that translocation was normal for Elijah. But that was the gift of faith at work. See, you will not die in that, in that accident. If that gift of faith turns on, the car can come to the edge of the cliff. The two tires will be down, but the car will stop until you come out. And if the car doesn't stop 
as he's falling, something will carry you from the car. You will just find yourself standing on the road. The kidnappers kidnapped everybody in the bus. The gift of faith didn't come for you to declare, I will not die. You were hoping and wishing that that word will come and you will say, I will not die, but the word didn't come. You were hoping that somehow soldiers will come out from somewhere and nothing happened. By the time it gets red and it looks as if it's over, suddenly you find yourself sitting in the middle of the road. And they say, how did you get here? I don't know. I was carried. That's how the gift of faith works. By all means, it must deliver you from the problem. And when it's done, the excellence is that you will have supernatural rest. You will not be perturbed. There will be no anxiety. Hear me. One of the most important gifts that you must have is the gift of faith. One gift that insists that you must be preserved is the gift of faith. Elohim Madonna. Ah, Elohim Madonna. Ah, Elohim Madonna. When you are in the middle of the problem trust God a word will just come you will declare I can't end here you won't know how you said it but somehow you will come out because it's either that situation stops or you are carried from that situation that's how faith works you will be caught up you'll be caught up that's the excellency of this gift sit down give me five minutes let me finish power gift. The second dimension of power gifts is the workings of miracles. The workings of miracles is like the gift of faith, but there's a difference. The difference between the workings of miracles and the gift of faith is that in the gift of workings of miracles, you are allowed to participate in the process. God gives you the opportunity to participate in the process. So the workings of miracles it's a supernatural ability divinely imparted to work miracles. Remember, the gift of faith is the supernatural ability divinely imparted to receive miracles. But in this one, is the supernatural ability divinely imparted to do what? To work miracles. So while in the gift of faith you are at rest, you don't really participate in the process, in the workings of miracles, God gives you the privilege to participate. That's why it is called walking. Because you have to walk something. And it's also called miracles because there are dimensions to this thing. There are many dimensions to these miracles. And I'll give you five of them. Number one, the first dimension of walking of miracles is what we call instantaneous healing. Now, when somebody is healed by the gift of healing, he will be healed completely and instantly but it will take a while for him to recover so for example if somebody's somebody is lame and is lame from birth the leg is bent like this and the leg is healed the leg will be healed instantly but he will take maybe two weeks or three weeks or one more to learn how to walk because he has never walked before you see that if somebody is bedridden for 20 years and the person maybe because there's cancer or because there is a sickness something the sickness can be healed instantly but it will take time for him to eat and become strong and start doing well now the difference between the gift of healing and working some miracles is that if the person is healed by the gift of healing it will take time for him to recover but if the person is healed by working some miracles even the recovery is instantaneous. So if you study Acts chapter 6 verse 3, at the beautiful gate, the man that was lame, 3 verse 6, when he was healed, you see the process. Silver and gold have I known, such as I have I give you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. The guy couldn't stand up. Peter knew that this thing needs walking some miracles, not healing. So what did he do? He had to participate. The Bible said he held him. 
pulled him up. As he was pulling him up, God put strength in his ankle. This guy was supposed to take some weeks to learn how to use his leg. But instantly, the Bible said he was limping and he was walking. Immediately, process shortened. Perfection was achieved. If you study the book of John chapter 5 at the pool of Bethesda, Jesus met a man that was sick 38 years. The guy was bedridden. That means he, he couldn't stand up. That's where he eases himself. That's where they bait him. Immediately, Jesus came up to him. Will that be made whole? The guy said, I have no man to help me. He said, when the water is stirred, no man carries me in. And Jesus said, will thou be made whole? And eventually, he said, rise up, carry your mat. And they picked him up. Immediately, somebody who was bedridden for 38 years began to go home. There was no time to eat food. There was no time to get energy. Both the energy and the recovery was imparted. So somebody who was lying down for 38 years carried his mat on his head and started strolling home as if he has been feeding well. That is working of miracles. It is instantaneous. The recovery process is instantaneous. So when you are operating in the power gifts, you need to know which one is working part time. You can come to somebody and minister from the place of the gift of healing. So the person was lame. The person can be healed, but he may be walking and falling. He will need time to recover. Those bones need to be exercised. He will need to eat. So don't think that, oh, because the person is walking and falling, he's not healed. He's healed. What he needs is recovery. The only time somebody can be healed instantly and he starts jumping is when he's walking to miracles. Because there are many who are not taught. So somebody can be healed of an infirmity because it's taking time to recover. They think nothing has happened. They don't know the difference. So when God has done something, instead of praising God, they are looking. Has he been done? Has he not been done? Uh, will he come back? They don't have understanding. So working some miracles operate by what? Instantaneous healing. Number two, working some miracles provokes creativity in the miracle workings. What does that mean? It means two things. Number one, in creative expression, certain parts of the body that were cut off because of infirmity, if working some miracles is at work, they will grow back instantly. That's one of the major miracles that happened in Azusa. They will cut off somebody's leg. He will come for the service. They will pray for him. Leg will grow out. If you were there, you were wrong. Leg will come out. <laughs> What's happening here? Is it true? The leg was caught. He will grow out. That's called creative miracles. And you see Jesus walked in it. And then there are some people who are born without body parts. If it is working some miracles, the body part will be recreated. That's how powerful that gift is. Somebody can, maybe went to a hospital, had a kidney challenge, they cut off one kidney. And then a man who has working some miracles can come lay hands on his chest. The kidney will not be energized. The second kidney that was cut off will be replaced. So parts of the body that were lost or were destroyed were healed. So every time you read the Bible and you hear that Jesus healed those that were maimed, it means there are people with missing body part. It was working some miracles that went to place. That's how it works. Let me read a verse or two for you. Matthew 14. Okay, I start with maiming. Matthew 18 verse 8. You see workings of miracles. And then Mark 9 43. Wherefore, oh, I wanted to give you the definition of the word. Get Mark, get Mark 9 43 for me. He was showing them, I put this scripture when I was still drafting it to show you the meaning of maimed. So that you understand what it means maimed. He said, if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. He said, it is better for thee to enter eternal life maimed than having two hands to go to hell. Are you seeing this? So everywhere in the Bible, 
where you see that Jesus healed those that were maimed, he was actually talking about people that their body parts were cut off. That's why in the book of John, John chapter 9, the man that was born blind, you see that Jesus came. The guy didn't have eye socket. He created it and the eye appeared. You saw another man that he said, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. The Bible says he sat on the ground. He spat. He made mud out of the spittle. He was creating eye socket and put it in the eye and said, go and wash. And new eyeballs were created. That's working some miracles. So the first dimension of that gift is when you create what was not. The second dimension of that gift is when you are able to supernaturally multiply things. And so you see that also in John chapter 6 from verse 6 to verse 11 where Jesus multiplied bread. So faith was at work because he knew it would happen but working some miracle was the dynamics for that thing to happen. He carried the bread. He told them break it. Give to them. As they were breaking the bread was multiplying. So in working some miracles you participate. Now there are some people who do not have the gift of healing, but they have the gift of working some miracles. But the problem with them is that they don't know they need to participate for something to happen. So while they were watching the healing evangelist, the healing evangelist will give a commandment by the gift of faith. Somebody will stand up from which year and start walking. And for 10 years, they have been praying to God, give me this gift. And they are making declaration, nobody is standing up. You know why? That evangelist you are watching has the gift of faith. So when he talks, the energy enters and leaves the people. You have the gift of working some miracles. Until you go to the guy and pull him up, he will never walk. So the gift is in you, but you need to discern it. That's why for you, you are praying for people to drop crutches. Every time you see a man with crutches, the Holy Ghost is pushing you, collect it. Because what you have is not the gift of faith. It's the gift of working some miracles. If you don't collect those crutches, the person will never walk. And then you out of fear, you are standing somewhere. You are saying, that fear means you don't have the gift of faith. You are saying, Father, everybody who is sick here, in the name of Jesus, walk. Nobody is walking. The Holy Ghost is pushing you. Collect the crutch. Collect it. And sometimes you collect it. He said, drag the person. You now collect it and say, let's be careful. Let's be careful. Can you walk? The person said, I cannot walk. He said, try. He said, no, I can't. Hold him and drag him. That's when the anointing will move. If you don't participate, the miracle will never happen. That's how the gift works. You must participate for the gift to happen. And the second way that gift takes place is by creative miracles. The third way that gift works is by supernatural signs and wonders. So when you see people who can create supernatural wonder is a gift on their life. God working some miracles. You see the life of Paul. The Bible said handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the body of Paul. He carried his own handkerchief. He said take, put it on the sick, they will walk. Acts of the Apostles 19 verse 11 and 12. He knew that what he had was not healing. What he had was workings of miracles. So there must be participation. So when Paul carried his handkerchief, he knew exactly what he was doing. If I don't participate, miracles won't take place. So since I'm not around, take the hanky, put it on the person. The moment an activity happens, the miracle will follow. And the thing happens. And those are special operations. Look at Peter. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 5 verse 15, the Bible said he put his shadow on them. And those who were sick were made whole. He participated in the process. And as he participated, special signs and wonders began to happen. Look at Moses. When he was before the Red Sea, he says, stretch your rod. So when you are doing workings or miracles, if you don't participate, nothing will happen. And Moses stretched his rod and the wind blew through the rod and the river parted. Are you seeing that? So, but this dimension are special signs and special wonders. Look at Joshua. In Joshua, I think chapter 10, verse 12, he stood in front of the army and stretched his hand at the sun and said, let the sun remain still. And the sun did not move. So every time in scripture where you see special wonders, it's working some miracles at work. God will show you what to do. And when you do it, 
something so special supernatural that illustrates the sovereignty of god we go to work look at the case of elijah in first kings 18 he said build the altar they built it when the time came for the evening sacrifice he said feed it with water and they filled it they were participating in the miracle and he showed up and made the declaration and the fire came down he knew how it works many christians are not manifesting supernatural signs because they don't know how the gift on their life works three evangelists can go out one has the gift of faith he will be talking things will be happening another one has the gift of healing you have the gift of workings of miracle if you talk you will come back without testimony so you must lay hands on people you must pull people out of which year and you will do anything the holy ghost tells you to do because it's in your participation that it happens and when you start doing that one of the expression is through supernatural signs and wonders number four is through the transcending of natural laws when a man is operating the gifts of workings of miracles he transcends natural law in john chapter 2 from verse 7 to verse 11 you saw what jesus did he said fill the water pots with water they filled it he said fetch from it take it to the governor of the feast there was participation as they took it water turned to wine that is transcending what supernatural laws these are four major ways by which the gift of workings of miracles take place when what you are doing goes beyond the natural law know that it's a gift at work in your life in matthew 14 verse 25 the bible says jesus came walking on water that's workings of miracles you are doing something that the holy ghost inspires you to do and you are going above natural laws know that that gift is at work in your life now why is it important to know these operations if you know it you can now study the signs that comes with it so when the signs come you will know that the gift is active you will start taking action there are some people who have this gift when they come out their hands begin to shake if their hands begin to shake like this they know that anybody with broken bone that they touch must be healed so you see them start pulling people up pulling people up pulling people he has understood the sign he has mastered it and discerned it and so anytime that sign comes he doesn't need to feel anything he knows what is at work workings of miracles have been activated there are some people that when that gift come something begins to move on their head like insect and then you tell them that there's no food in the house he said there's one bread there bring it he will lay hands on the bread and say eat the bread may not multiply you but everybody may have just a bite and that bite you will not be hungry again for three days the guy knows as this thing is moving there's there's possibility of miracle around so anything that comes to his spirit he does it and the power will flow i'm showing you why many christians are barren as touching spiritual gifts they don't know the signs or they don't know the channel they don't know the channel do you know how i know if god is in the place my people here know sometimes i show up and somebody is worshiping i say kai that person is dry it's not because of the song the song can be very emotional people can even be hearing it and crying but if i come to a place there are many signs that the holy ghost has taught me to show that he's present and those are the same signs i see and i can dare to try a miracle one of the signs is when i stand in the place where god is my left leg begins to move like this i'm not the one moving it they, they, if somebody is doing something spiritual the leg will start moving like this and as it's moving if you like be doing something that i don't like but i know that thing is spiritual so long as the leg is moving the same way if i'm preaching i'm preaching i'm ministering i stand and the leg begins to shake i say okay um god wants to do something now i didn't hear anything i've seen my sign that's what makes you a spiritual man at that time i can go to you and say here open because i picked it i've picked it i know it god taught me and the moment it starts happening miracles must happen it's no longer a fluke 
is something you know. And as you begin to master these gifts, the Holy Ghost will begin to teach you your signs. Teach you, teach you, teach you. Some people, when that gift begins to work, their heart becomes cold. Everything becomes quiet. That's why you see some ministers singing him. It's not because it's the him that heals the sick. But they begin to look for things that resonate with that frequency. They must become still. There are some ministers that tell you, stop moving. Stop. Don't move. Everybody be quiet. A Benihim will tell Usher, stop there. Don't move. Stay there. He doesn't want any activity anymore because there is stillness. And so long as he maintains that stillness, the miracles will be happening. The miracles will be happening. You now can go and stand like this. Nothing will happen. Because your sign has not come. And you don't know your sign. The power gift. The Christian is a weapon. Oh, but the things we do are encoded. One of the reasons you walk with the Holy Ghost is to find your code. Find it. Those of you who sing here. You may be singing. And anytime you start singing and your eyes begin to blink. You know that God wants to deliver people. <laughs> you will just be singing your song. Singing your song. The moment it starts blinking, maybe the song you are singing, you don't even know it well. You will say, now anybody who is demonized, you are about to be delivered. It's not about shouting. You can even talk like a woman. But when you talk, the power that will move will shock you. It's called workings of miracles. The moment your participation is activated, the power is released for the manifestation. That's the second power gift. The last one is gift of healing. Now, it's important to know that the gift of workings of miracles is different from believing God for a miracle. The gift of workings of miracles is instantaneous. It happens like the gift of faith. But trusting God for a miracle is a process of developing your faith through holding on to God's promises and through meditating on scripture. So this one takes a process of growth. There are two different things. Workings of miracles come upon you as a gift. And it's instant. The moment you know it, you can go to work as the Holy Ghost inspires you. So you can find somebody who just gave his heart to Christ today. He enters a service and then that gift comes upon him. He sees somebody with a stick. He will go and collect it. He doesn't even know what he's doing. The gift will give him the inspiration on what to do. And as he collects it, this person will start working. And you are wondering what's going on. It's a gift that work. But he may need five years to trust God for miracles. He will grow in it. Meditating on scriptures, standing on promises before miracles begin to happen. And he will be growing in it little by little. But when it's a gift, it's instant. The protocol is inspired. And the result follows immediately. You must learn it and master it. Finally, the gifts of healing is the supernatural ability divinely imparted to heal the sick. It is called gifts of healing because there are different dimensions of the operation of the gift. So it's called gifts of healing. And there are three major dimensions. Number one, there is a gift for soulish healing and there's a gift for bodily healing. So there are people that have gift only for soulish healing. There are other people that have gift only for bodily healing. I'm showing you why it's called gifts in plural. Because of the dimensions. If you study Luke chapter 4 verse 18, you are going to see that some of the healing Jesus spoke about were what? Soulish. Because some people are sick in the mind, not in the body. The guy looks very handsome, but he's mentally foolish. Or he's depressed. A demon put the garment of heaviness on him. One person who has the gift of bodily healing can be talking and cancer will vanish. But somebody will be depressed there for 10 years. And another person may not have gift for bodily healing. But the moment he talks, that person who has been depressed for 7 years instantly will be healed. So, the same gift, but one is for soulish healing, another one is for bodily healing. That's the first dimension. The jurisdictions of oppression. The second reason why it's called gifts of healing is because of the many causes of sickness. There are some sicknesses that are caused by virus and microorganisms. There are other sicknesses that are caused by systemic failure. So somebody can be operating an axe and the axe hit him on the knee and divide the bone. 
and he can't walk is because of failure in system. Maybe he lifted the axe and the iron fell off and hit his leg and cut off his ankle. He can't walk again. That's systemic failure. And then there is other giftings that is born out of human wickedness. Somebody goes and consults with a sorcerer and puts a charm and somebody walks on it and he can't walk again. And then there's another dimension that demons are involved. A demon came in the dream and pressed you down. And when you woke up, you had asthma. So when this gift is at work, there are some people that if what is wrong with you is an accident, go and sleep. If you like, the leg should be cut. It will come back. There are other people that what is wrong with you? If it's a demon, forget. So long as it's a demon, if they show up, you'll be healed because they came. Because the oil on their life responds to demonic affliction. There are some that it responds to systemic failure. So if you say, I was driving, I had an accident, my hip broke. He will touch it, you will hear, ka, 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 the bone will enter. So long as it's accident, the guy is a human mechanic. His work is to repair bodies. Another one deals with demonic affliction. And then another one, if it's microorganism, they say you have HIV. It's a virus. It will come and look at you and blow. <laughs> the, all the virus will go. And there are some who are based on genetic deformations, genetic issues. Somebody was born and there's a genetic disorder. They say the person was born, he didn't have ear. He will come and put his hand like this. Say, close your eye. He will come up, he will remove his hand, here we grow. <laughs> you say, ah, what happened? If he's genetic, leave him. That is his area of specialty. He doesn't joke with. They say somebody was born and his his kidneys shrinked. He will come and say, hug me. You will hug him, he will look up like this. He say, go and check the doctor tomorrow and come back. He will come back, they say, kidney is normal. That is hog, but there's a gift. So it's called gifts of healing because the gift is sensitive to the causes of infirmity. It's called gifts of healing because the gift is sensitive to the dimension or the constitution of the human body. It can be bodily or soulish. And finally, it is called gifts of healing because of the specialization that many ministers and ministries have. There are some people that are good with deafness if somebody is deaf it's easy for them their faith can easily work so they go for a crusade a thousand times they will tell you god wants to walk they will start with if you are deaf come that's where they know their gift is strong there are some people that is cancer there are some people that is rheumatoid arthritis if it has to do with your bone they are good so whether it is accident or whether it is demon whether it is system failure if it is bone that's their department whether it's a demon, whether it's an accident, if it's here, that's their department. Hundred times it will work. So there is that level of specialization. That's why if you see ministers, there are some ministers that large number of their testimonies is cancer. It's not because God won't heal other things, but you will know that this one is predominant. There are some other people carrying the person up, the person will fall down. They will say, everybody stretch your hand. The power of God is here. They will carry after the second time, they'll start sweating from here. If you start sweating from your forehead, know that there is a problem. They will carry handkerchief and clean it. Clean it. The third time, they will go back and start explaining some things. You know, sometimes God heals instantly, sometimes it's later. The faith of the people will go down. The miracle will fail that day. Meanwhile, the people God apportioned to be healed, they won't be healed. But if you know that your strength is deafness, Look for one deaf person first. They may say there are five people on the mat. There is three people on which here. Leave them. If they like. See, sometimes when you go for crusade, some ushers, I don't know where they came from. The moment you say if you are sick, they start pushing which years. Did I say bring them here? They all, I was in Ghana some days ago. Before I say, I say I want to pray for the sick. I saw so I say, Kai, stop, stop. Follow instruction. Who told you to bring the people? I say if you are sick, don't, don't choke my service. You, you don't know that this thing is a skill. I'm managing the faith of the people. I'm managing the unction that is present. I'm managing my own faith. You want to choke? There's a, there's a balance. 
is a delicate balance. I say, stay where you are. When I pray, I say, if you are healed, come. A woman came out and said, I couldn't walk. Uh -huh, uh -huh. The faith of people is beginning to align with my unction. At that point, I now came down from the stage. I met, I saw all the women. There was one that there was life. She felt more alive. I perceived faith in her. I left the people in front of me. I went and met her. I said, give me the crutches. I collected it. Me and her started dancing. As we were dancing, other people were seeing what was happening. They too started coming alive. I went to another man that was blind. I said, in the name of Jesus, open. I said, what am I wearing? He said, white. I said, yes. Now we are there. At this point now, we can say, whatever you came with, I don't care where it came from. I don't care for how long it has been. I declare as one saint. <laughs> They'll say this apostle is skill, is skill. I walked the people to that energy level. I came as one sent of God. I'm not a lecturer, I'm a witness with generation. Now, by the power of the Holy Ghost, whatever you came here with, I decree and declare now be healed. <laughs> a gangster, you walk your way there. It's a skill. It's a skill. That's how these things work. And every one of us must master it master it and make sure you walk in it there is nobody here who does not have a gift so long as the holy ghost lives in you there must be one manifestation discover it grow in it master it and see how it changes your world but remember i told you there are five principles right principle number one is the principle of what consciousness know the gift that you have First Samuel 9 verse 9. I am the seer. He knew he could see. Know what you have. Know it. There are many gifts, but know the one that you have. I have the gift of walking some miracles. I have the gift of faith. I have the gift of healing. I have the gift of word of knowledge. I know. So when I come into a meeting, I'm looking for the one the Holy Ghost will own. So there are times I finish preaching is gift of faith. I make a bold declaration. There are times I finish preaching is word of knowledge. I'll be checking. There's somebody on the second row here. You have a pain on your left breast. Where are you? The person is healed. Ah, there's another person clo close to that AC. You had an accident, your left leg, you can't walk. Yeah, so I'm the one. Stand up. When those two happen, the place will open. If it's faith, when I finish preaching, I said, listen, I want you to understand what I've taught. I want you to know the efficacy. So now, everybody who is sick, shut, stop the keyboard. They will say, Omo, now wow. See, Omo. Stop, in faith, I have picked what God wants to do. And I'll say, in the name of Jesus, everybody who is sick here, be healed. As I finish, as I'm finished, I say, if you are, check your bodies. Now, if you are healed, come here. It's faith. I know it. So when I'm ministering, I'm checking. Which of my weapons with the Holy Ghost are light upon? If you don't have the consciousness, you will not manifest it. Number two, I say it's the principle of faith. If you don't create a faith atmosphere, gifts will not work. That's why most times we tell you, tomorrow is miracle service. It's faith we are activating. So as we say it, everybody's consciousness and everybody's heart is geared to, towards miracle. Because when faith is activated, God works. In Hebrews 11, 6, it says, whoever cometh to him, must believe that he is and is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. If you don't open faith, God won't work. Number three, I said, is the principle of unction. Don't come dry. Stir yourself up. In Luke 10, 17, the Bible said on a certain day, 5, 17, it said Jesus was teaching. The power of God was present to him. There was unction. In Luke 6, 19, he said they sought to touch him. And he said as many as touched him, virtue left him. So there was virtue. There was unction. Spend time to pray. Spend time to worship. Fast regularly and meditate on God's word. You must know what generates unction in your life. You must know it. Me, I live a fasted life. Because I know I need to be light to be able to minister. So you will hardly find a year where I don't fast for many months. I live fasting. My people know. Unless I know that it's telling on my health. You can never catch me eating breakfast or lunch. I operate that way. 
And then I spend a lot of time in worship. Because sound stir me. So my phone have different playlists. You will see favorite. You will see most favorite. You see most most favorite. You will see hymns. You will see floating worship. I have them. Then you see praise. You see rugged praise. It depends on which one my spirit desires. As I'm walking, I sense it. If I know it's praise, I unlock it. And as it's praying, it's watering me. It's watering me. And then I spend time in prayer. I don't come out of my room unless I have an appointment until 12 noon. I spend, I start my day on the altar. I'm lying on the bed, I'm talking to God. I stand up, I'm walking around. Because there must be unction. You don't know where the greatest demand of your ministry will come from. And so at all times, you must be ready. Sometimes you are entering the office, somebody comes with an issue, you just speak. But there was unction. In Mark 1.35, they say early in the morning, Jesus went to a quiet place, solitary place. He said, dear, he prayed. He generates unction before he goes out. There are many dry Christians. They come with dry revelation. And they are quoting scripture. Nothing happens. Because there's no unction. Number four. I said there must be a principle of what? Desire and expectation. If you want giftings to work, expect it to. Pastor Chris was teaching us many years ago. He said, Tia Losborn was talking with a preacher. And the preacher said to Tia Losborn, he said, why is it that when you pray, people who have cancer are healed? When you pray, people who walk on what, on which year, stand up. People with crutches, drop them. But me, when I pray, people only fall down. And Tia Losborn told him, that's what you want to see. That's why you are seeing it. Because the gift flows in the direction of your desire and expectation. So if you want to come for a meeting and you are talking, people are falling down and everywhere is charged. You will see it every day. But if you want people to be genuinely helped so that cancer will dematerialize, so that the, the, the lame person will walk, as you start cultivating that desire and as you start expecting it, the unction, the gift will start flowing in that direction. So it's not difficult to walk in the gift. But what is the nature of your desire? What is when you go for a service? Is it just utterance you are looking for to speak mysteries so that people will say this guy is deep? This guy is deep. You will hear this guy is deep forever. Look at the move of God now in the body of Christ. It's about deep, deep, deep. Everybody talking deep. And those who are poor are poor. Those who are sick are sick. Those who are dying are dying. The power has not yet come because that's what we desire. We want people to see us as spiritual men who know spiritual things. So when we come, we carry some spiritual posture. We, we do some things. We talk from third heaven. And we are talking third heaven. Cherubims are coming. Blind people are blind. Lame people are lame. Crippled people are crippled. What is the problem? Something is wrong with our desire. We don't really love the people. We just want the people to praise us. We want the people to hail us as spiritual men. And at the end of the day, that's what we get. That's why they see apostles and prophets. They rank them as men of stature. Go to the meeting of men of stature and see what happened. Somebody says, I'm seeing a cherubim here. Somebody says, 600 angels entered this meeting. 600 angels. And one deaf ear has not opened. No cripple is walking. No blind eye is seen. And there are 600 angels. Those are your angels. They are weak angels. <laughs> Go and feed them. Desire desire see desire this thing paul said in first corinthians 14 1 he said desire spiritual gifts desire them pursue them run after them see tell yourself every day i walk out something miraculous must happen i can't talk to people and they are normal when i speak doors open when i speak cripples walk when i speak cancers dematerialize these those desires that make us see the results why do you think people come here and they tell us you spoke and the door opened? Somebody gave me a house. Because I genuinely want to see the people move. I don't want to see poor people, weak people surrounding me. So it's not enough to come for a service and I preach the say, Kai, the apostle of mysteries. See the kind of deep revelation you have. No, that's not my desire. I want those who hear me for their stories to change. The Bible said, poor men, beggarly men, charlatan, weak men came to David in Kevadulam. When David finished with them, they became mighty warriors. And when their stories were told, he said, Eleazar, 
the son of Dodo. Who knew that that guy was a broken man? He met David. He said he fought with despair. His hands were cleaved. His hands. He fought over 800 men. And he slew a whole battalion. Because when he met David, something came out of David that changed him. He said, Shammah, the son of Agai. Oh my God. Who knew that these were broken men? Suddenly, they became veterans. How can men who were in debt, when David wanted to build God a house, these guys donated gold, silver, bronze, diamond. Where did they get it from? Because David turned them from charlatans to veterans. That's why, listen, when you are doing a ministry, don't look for big men. Stay your gift. Love the people genuinely. See what the anointing on your life will turn them to. The organizer that came to you. The beggar that came to you. The poor man that came to you. The young campus student that came. Sit on them. And pour that thing on top of them. A day will come. That campus student can become the richest businessman in that city. A day will come. That organizer can become the prophet over a nation. Because you desired it. And as you desired it, the oil from your life kept flowing. Barren women can become mothers in Israel. Blind men can give direction to the body of Christ. Poor men can sponsor the agenda of God. See, see our problem. People start ministry, they are talking politely and talking politically. So that the rich men in society can come. Are you the one that made them? You didn't make them. You don't know what it means to make men. Why do you think Jesus went to fishermen? I carry something that thing can change anybody and so he went to the river bank follow me I will make you the thing I carry makes men that's what giftings come to do I will make you and when Jesus left the Bible said this be the man that turned their walls upside down they had become captains they had become generous they had become apostles they had become leaders over generations until today they are studying the writings of Peter in Harvard University. Rivers, rivers of living waters. Out of my belly shall flow. Out of my belly shall flow. Shall flow. Rivers, rivers of living waters. Out of my belly shall flow. Shall flow rivers. Rivers of living water. Everything you need is in you. Sharpen it. Pastor Chris told us a story many years ago. He said when they started, they will come to them and say, it's children's church. Because almost everybody was campus people. It's only one elderly woman that used to come. Children's church. Children's church. Some people were talking diplomatically. Politicians went there. There's nothing wrong in big people going there. But don't look at people. Develop what you carry. You will raise men. Bishop Oedeko said, God told him, don't look for money. He said, make men. Money will come. Because there's something you carry. Even that your business, allow your gift to shine upon it. And see how that business can rise from nothing to become something that the globe will sought after or seek after. God knew when he gave us giftings that those giftings had the power to change our story. I prophesy over you every grace and every gift on your life is activated tonight so let the river flow begins to bring every death into life it's a life-giving river so let it flow right here when the river flows To life is a life giving river, so let it flow right in. When the river flows, as the river flows, begins to bring.
Bring a free that thing to life. 